So as we wrap up this episode, Warwick, I have a little surprise for you. That I okay. <laughs> so I have prepared a quick fire round with five questions for you. Now, the questions are a little bit deeper. However, what sure. I'm looking for is just the first answer that comes to mind. Got so it. just a short, sweet, first thing that okay. comes to mind. All right. Yep. You ready? Yep. From your journey, what are you most proud of? My children. The fact that they're the first generation and five generations to grow up in a norm, relatively normal upbringing. They, um, they have values. They all have faith. They, they work hard. They're responsible. They're the kind of people people want to hire. They get it done. They're humble. They're not running around looking for fast cars. The fact they've grown up with, they're, they're living not just my values, they're living the values of my great great grandfather, John Fair. I think that's the ultimate legacy. When you see them living your values uh, of humility, integrity, work, work ethic, uh, it fills me with immense gratitude. I'm so proud of them. I mean, that's other than my wife, that's pretty much close at the top <laughs> of the list of what I'm grateful for and what I'm proud of. Amazing. That's That's beautiful. All right, next question. What's one thing you would want to tell your younger self? Um, have some grace. Forgive yourself. You're young. You made mistakes. Look, there are things I could have told myself I, I, I probably wouldn't have listened to, like, hey, do you really want to do this takeover? I mean, I'm a certified executive coach. I know how to ask questions. I could have said, is this about you? Is this about your family? You know, really, is this what you're passionate about? I don't think I would have listened. Sometimes you've got to go through the pain and there's no shortcut, unfortunately. So that, I think, would have been a bit of a waste of time, although I could have tried. What I probably would say is, you know, this is not all on you. This is decades, if not more in the making, maybe more than decades. You tried your best. Yes, you made some mistakes and bad decisions, but give yourself some grace. Forgive yourself. That's probably the thing I'd say it's not all your fault. It's not all your fault. It's not all your fault. I probably have to say that a million times before it got through. <laughs> Still, I wouldn't get through. But give yourself some grace. I mean, some people need to be told you need to be accountable. I needed the other speech. I'm, you know, I don't need that speech for me. I need the speech of give yourself some grace. Forgive yourself. Beautiful. Number three. Is there anything you wish you could go back and do differently? Um. A lot of things, not do the takeover and all, but I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have um, got out. I mean, a lot of things I would have. The conundrum is if I'd done things differently and stayed in the family a bit. Well, I, I could have never have left, but not done the takeover. Waited, bided my time. One day I would have had enough shares to be manager, director, or chairman. But that life would have been a massive gilded prison. It would have been an awful life. I mean, what it would have done to my kids. Could I have been the father I am now? I mean, I don't know. Even if I tried, they would have grown up with those expectations. So that's the problem is, um, could I have done things differently? Yes. But the outcome could have been actually worse if I'd done things differently. It's a weird irony. If I'd done things differently and not done the takeover, it could have been worse. I could have been wealthier financially, though we're extremely comfortable. I could have been wealthier financially, Gail, my wife, certainly wouldn't have enjoyed it. She grew, grew up in a small town in Ohio. She has no desire to hobnob it with the rich and famous and throw parties for 500. That's just not, that's not really what she enjoys. It would have been worse for my kids. So yeah, if I'd done things differently, it could have been actually worse. So it's a weird, it's hard to answer that question. It's crazy to think about how a lot of times the thing that you think isn't working out for you is actually a part of everything working out for you. Exactly. You know, when, you, when you hear that back and you're like, well, Gail wouldn't have liked, you know, being in that environment anyway. And my kids would have grown up differently and all these different things. It's really just interesting how that thing that we think that isn't working out for us may actually be a part of the bigger picture of everything working in out. In some us. sense, that worst day that you feel like is awful, sometimes in the bigger picture, it can prove to be a day that really serves you and key yeah. to living the life that you love um, a fulfilling life. Yeah. Yeah. Next question. What's the number one thing that helped you move beyond your crucible? That answer is, it is my faith, my faith in, in God. I think for all of us, when you go through a crucible, it can either 
push you away from your values and beliefs, which is very understandable, or it can push the other way. I was like, a, as I've sometimes said, a man clinging to a mast of a ship in a raging storm. Um, that faith in God and just that sheer fact that I believe he loves us all unconditionally, that all of us, from a broader perspective, are loved because of who we are, not what we do. We're, as somebody said, we're not you know, human doings, we're human beings. We're, we all inherently have value. That paradigm shift that I'm not worth something because of my inheritance or my heritage or John Fairfax Limited, I'm worth something just because I'm a human being. We're all inherently valuable. That paradigm shift that God loves us unconditionally and the, the value set that goes with it, that was the single biggest thing that I kept clinging to uh, that helped me come back. It was the single biggest force to come help me come back from, the, from, from my pit. I'm so happy you said that because that's such a beautiful reminder that so many of us could use more often. All right, last and final question. What's the number one piece of advice you have for listeners who are in the pit of their crucible moment right now? This may be your worst day, but life can get better. Not always the circumstances, obviously for people with physical tragedies, the physical impairments won't necessarily get bad. I do realize that not the circumstances don't always change, but yet I think life holistically, more generally, can get better. So it's hard to understand that in your worst day, it's hard to believe that. But even if you can believe it 1% or maybe 5%, which would be pretty massive on that day, tomorrow may be better, maybe next year, maybe next decade, somehow life can get better, uh, somehow this pit that I'm in, this crucible can serve a higher purpose. Somehow there can be blessing from it. So I think I would hope that that sense of life can get better, that what I've been through can serve others. Hopefully that fuels you to do what we say is probably the biggest thing when you're in the pit is to make that choice. Am I going to hide under the cover and be angry and bitter? You know, and I could have been, I could have said, you know, my dad made some poor choices. He got married three times. Some other family members threw him out as chairman. Why do I have to grow up in this all terrible family and media business that caused dysfunction? I could have gone through a lot of, you know, anger and bitterness. And, you know, look at what I did. I'm worth nothing. You know, I don't deserve even the plan. I could get down a, an anger at myself, anger at other people, bitter at myself, bitter at other people. I could have gone down that cycle. Um but okay, this was awful, but how do I use this in service of others? How do I make a choice to get out of bed and make one positive baby step forward? So if this is your worst day, it can get better. Uh, your pit of despair, your pit of agony can serve others, but really it comes down to a choice. Am I going to choose to try to move one baby step forward? And maybe you don't have enough energy today, but maybe tomorrow, maybe you're going to need some friends to help you make that step with you uh, and for you maybe, but it can get better. It can serve others. Just think of what one baby step am I going to choose to move forward with, however difficult that is.